Years ago, the Reverend Frederick Buchner, I'll, I'll speak more about Reverend Buchner in the sermon. Years ago, Frederick Buchner wrote words that sound like an epiphany to me. He said, listen to your life. See it for the fathomless mystery it is. In the boredom and pain of it, no less than in the excitement and gladness, touch, taste, and smell your way to the holy and hidden heart of it. Because in the last analysis, all moments are key moments, and life itself is grace. Welcome to Worship with Westside. It is Sunday, January the 23rd, 2022. It is the third Sunday in the season of Epiphany. Our words for gathering. Though we be apart, we still gather to listen for God's word, to discern God's will, to worship with God's people. This day is holy to our joyful God. We are members of Christ's body, Christ's church. The Spirit of God is upon us, and we have been appointed to bring good news to all. Let us worship our holy God. Our opening prayer. Great God, you gather us from our separate lives to hear your word and to respond to your heat your revealing. You have appointed us for the work of your church. We seek your guidance, your wisdom, your way. Bind us together with you in worship and transform us from distinct persons into the body of Christ, alive with your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, gracious God, that we have sinned and we ask for forgiveness. We confess we have failed to live by your Son's commandment of love. Too often we regard other churches as rivals. Too often we are hostile to each other and slow to forgive. Too often we focus only on our personal interest and we ignore the needs of sisters and brothers. Gracious God, in your generous love, you send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. And in Jesus, you teach us to love without discrimination. Turn us around, Redeemer God, and do not let our fears have dominion over us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now our opening song of praise.
with the power to break the chains of sin and death and rise triumphant from the grave. By faith the church was called to go. someone say to you, a parent or a teacher, are you listening to me? Maybe they were a bit upset and said, what did I just tell you? But if they really want you to listen, because you probably hadn't been earlier, they say your first name, middle name, last name, before saying what it is they want you to hear. I ask you these questions to remind you, sometimes we don't listen. And other times we hear what the person says, but we don't act on what they're telling us. This can happen to anyone, kids, adults, we all do it. Today's scripture, when Jesus is teaching in the synagogue, Jesus is telling people that the good news he's reading in scripture has been fulfilled by them hearing it. What Jesus means when he says this is if the people listen to the scripture and do what the scripture says, then the good news will happen. The good news he's reading speaks of people. People will see clearly. The not free will be set free. Everyone will know and remind each other of God's love. That sounds pretty good. But fulfilling a scripture isn't a one-time thing or even a one-person thing. That's why Jesus tells the people they need to fulfill scripture by hearing it and doing it. This is also why Jesus invites us to follow him and to learn to be like him. Because when we follow Jesus, we learn how to better share God's healing, love, 
and forgiveness. When we do that, scripture is being fulfilled and the good news is happening. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who encourages us. Help us to learn from him how to love and share your word. Amen. Good morning. Today's first reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 26. An introduction. Paul wrote his first letter to the Corinthians in response to a letter brought by a delegation of church members seeking his advice on issues dividing the church in Corinth. Paul's metaphor of the church as the body of Christ is as powerful today as it was in the first century. Everyone plays a unique role as part of an integrated living whole. If one part of the body suffers, all suffer. If one part receives praise, all rejoice. The reading now from 1 Corinthians. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our less presentable parts have greater modesty but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given, given greater honor to that part which lacks it, and there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Good morning. The second reading is the introduction to Luke 4, verses 14 to 21. Jesus, filled with the Spirit, returns to Nazareth from his time in the wilderness to begin his ministry. As was his custom, he joins his faith community in the synagogue on the Sabbath. He's asked to read the lesson of the day. Jesus reads a passage from Isaiah, which highlights God's special concern for the poor and the oppressed and announces the arrival of the year of the Lord's favor. Today, Jesus proclaims through his life and work, Isaiah's vision is being fulfilled. The message. Jesus returned to Galilee, powerful in the spirit. News that he was back spread throughout the countryside. He taught in their meeting places to everyone's acclaim and pleasure. He came to Nazareth where he had been reared. As he always did on the Sabbath, he went to the synagogue. When he stood up to read, he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. 
Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, God's Spirit is on me. God has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the place was on him, intent. Then he started in. You've just heard scripture make history. It came true now, it, just now in this place. May God bless the reading of his holy word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus has returned to his hometown, to Nazareth. Jesus went to the synagogue, as he always did on the Sabbath. He stood up to read, and was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus found the place where it was written. God's Spirit is on me. God has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set the burdened and the battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. The words of Isaiah were at least 700 years old when Jesus read them out. And we're hearing them 2,000 years after Jesus said them. These are ancient words, thousands of years old. And yet, they are exactly what I need to hear now, right here. 
Who isn't feeling burdened and battered? Who isn't feeling a little imprisoned? And I don't care how well your investments are doing or how much money you have in your savings account. The last 22 months have made us all a little poorer in some way. And all of us are hoping for good news for a change. In the synagogue that morning, Christ told the congregation that God's Spirit is on me, and this is God's year to act. The focus of the story is on Jesus. He's the one preaching, and it is clear what He has promised. Good news for the poor, and pardon for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, and freedom for the burdened and the battered. But it is clear he won't be doing this on his own. He will be recruiting followers. In the very next chapter, in chapter 5, he calls his first disciples. The church is crucial for this mission of good news, of recovery, of freedom. This is God's year to act, but it will be the church that does that action. The church, a body of one with many members. It is this metaphor, body with many members, from 1 Corinthians, which surfaces at the very end of a sermon preached years and years ago by the Reverend Frederick Buchner. Uh, Frederick Buchner is a, is a theologian I've quoted in the past. He's an American Presbyterian minister, a, a author of some 30 books. He wrote one uh, five years ago uh, when he was 90. He's 95 now. In the sermon, Buchner describes the magical Christmases of his, of his boyhood, spent with his brother at his grandparents' apartment in New York City. After painting a glimmering picture, he acknowledges he has forgotten almost every present he ever got. What he remembers, and what he recalls in his sermon, what he remembers is the sense of family, the communion with loved ones. I remember still, he says, the presence of all those people I, one way or another, loved, and who, one way or another, loved me. And the feeling that life simply could never get any better than this, and the almost unbearable excitement of it. Then, in a shocking twist, Buchner explains, a month before my tenth Christmas, my father committed suicide, and a few days later, my grandfather died as much of a broken heart as anything else. Those were the circumstances under which Buchner began to doubt. To use his words, he began to doubt there would be Christ enough to sustain him. Would there be Christ enough to get him through this? This is where the body of Christ comes in. On this planet, at least, Buchner asserts, the Church is the only body that for the time being Christ has. Which is to say, you and I are the only bodies Christ has. Jesus has no hands to reach out to people except our hands. He has no feet to go to them, except our feet. 
He has no eyes to see them with, except our eyes. No other faces to show them his love, except for our faces. But what if you do not believe what Jesus said when he, when he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah? And he read that prophecy. What if you don't believe what Jesus said? Well, I, I do not blame you. It was hard for those people in the synagogue that day to believe that they had heard Scripture make history. That what Isaiah had prophesied had, had come true just, just then in that place. They had, they had seen too many wars, too much persecution, too much corruption to believe that. I understand the skepticism of the congregation in the synagogue that morning. Thank God we have the Holy Spirit that keeps alive in us all the hope that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, this preaching in the synagogue story does not end in verse 21. The ultimate reaction of his hometown, of the crowd, is yet to come. And while that creates some, some suspense, that is not the suspense that interests me. There is a spiritual suspense at the end of verse 21. We are suspended between hearing Jesus' promise that this prophecy was going to be fulfilled and experiencing that fullness. It is coming, Jesus says. The kingdom is near. You can proclaim it to those longing and thirsting to hear it. But it's not here yet. Not completely. In this suspenseful state, we keep looking for glimmers of the kingdom, even as we do our best to let the Holy Spirit work in us and let it, through us, Show forth the kingdom and all of its grace-laden ways. In this morning's gospel, Christ appears in the synagogue, proclaiming he will be enough to sustain us. Jesus does this for us. He stands in our very midst and he welcomes us, invites us, to join with him as members of one body. Amen. And so be it. And now our closing praise song. great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, he made their glowing colors, he made their tiny great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. Yeah.
gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great is god almighty who has made all things Let us pray. O Lord, bless our gifts and offerings of this, of this week. May they be a sign of our intent to serve you. Use them and use us to bring good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, and bring wholeness and healing to all who are burdened and battered. O God, creator of life and savior of the world, with languages of all nations we come before you, and we bring you our hopes and our petitions. We pray for those who live in the midst of injustice. Encourage us to lift up, lift up their voices and strengthen their hope. We pray for those who continue to perpetuate injustice. May your kindness fill all hearts and make all of us agents of freedom and peace. We pray for the visible unity of the church. Lead us to fulfill Jesus' prayer that we may be one and work together to make real your kingdom. O oh God, we thank you for the many colors, cultures, and customs that we share in this world. In our differences, unite us by your love. Enable us to act together to uphold life and to make this world a just and peaceful place for all humanity. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Can we um, play Operation?